Okay, we gotta be serious for this one because I'm gonna be speaking French. Widescreen. Gerard Perigo. Gerard Perigo. Gerard Perigox. However you want to pronounce it, guys, we're talking about GP, baby. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dory Goodman, the time teller. So, Gerard Perigo, kind of a bummer, because nowadays they're known as a somewhat expensive, high-end AP Royal Oak homage brand, and all you gotta do is look back in time. They were a very orologically significant, truly innovative watchmaker. So we're gonna go ahead and explore them a little bit further today, and I'm gonna share with you a very vintage 1968 Gerard Perigo Gyromatic that I have here in the office today. It's 12, 10 p.m., let's get down to business. That's right guys, GP wasn't always an homage company. They were actually very, very innovative and according to the internets, GP has approximately 80 patents in the watchmaking domain and is the originator of many innovative concepts. <laughs> Ooh, a little bit titillating. Doesn't sound like I can say that on YouTube, but I can. Titillating, titillating, titties. So guys, in 1968, Gerard Perrault did something very, very important for the watchmaking world. They made the first mechanical high beat movement with the balance beating at 36,000 BPH. Very cool. So when we're thinking about high beat movements, Gerard Perigo did it. Thank you, GP. Now that watch from 1965, the high beat 36,000 BPH movement watch was the Gyromatic HF, HF standing for high frequency. The 1968 variant that I have here today is still technically a high beat movement. It doesn't beat at 36,000 BPH and it differs a little bit from the HF variant. So let's go ahead and take a look at this watch a little bit closer. So as I said earlier, this is a 1968 Gerard Perigo gyromatic date and it's powered by the caliber 3109 automatic movement with a lever escapement 25 joules a mono metallic balance 21,600 BPH so again technically high beat <laughs> So again, technically high beat, doesn't beat as smoothly as the 36,000 HF. It's got an Inca block shock absorber. It's got a 36.2 millimeter gold plated case. And one of my favorite attributes is that it's got a 41.4 millimeter lug to lug. So even though it's got only around a 36 millimeter case, it wears very nicely on a multitude of wrists, big or small. Again, I have a seven and a half inch wrist and it looks very nice on my wrist. Now this watch, of course, is Swiss made and it's got a date complication. Now there's a few things I absolutely love about this gyromatic. First, the champagne dial, gorgeous. It's aged so nicely. Um, I wouldn't even say there's that much patina on the dial. It's just a beautiful kind of gold champagne color uh, and the hands. The hands have a bit of patina. Uh, they've aged very gracefully and they're still very, very sharp. It kind of reminds me of my Grand Seiko J14070. But easily the best thing about this watch is that it's from the golden era of Gerard Perigo, right? This was as good as it gets. This is kind of a snapshot of orological history. Now, I'm not trying to say the current Gerard Perigos are poorly made watches, they're poorly finished. I'm not saying that, okay? I just wish they kind of would move away from this whole royal oak aesthetic. Um, they're clearly proficient enough and they clearly have some watchmaking acumen. Just use that and be innovative and go back to your old ways. And when I say go back to your old ways, I mean your old ways. Like, 1800s old. That's right, we're gonna jump back to 1884. Now, one of Gerard Perigo's most prolific patents was of the tourbillon with three gold bridges. So, according to their Wikipedia, the tourbillon with three gold bridges was awarded a gold medal at the Universal Exposition of Paris in 1889. Now, luckily for us, we're actually able to see more modern interpretations of this movement, the tourbillon with three gold bridges, because in 1980, there was a limited edition kind of reissue. They only made 20 uh, and it's of this wash, the tourbillon with three gold bridges. It's not really my aesthetic, but you can see it's incredibly impressive. And for the 1800s, boy, that is crazy. So again, I must say, Gerard Perigo, an incredibly impressive brand with a whole lot of cachet in my opinion. Um, I just think it's unfortunate that they're going the way of many other manufacturers. Uh, you know, the whole integrated bracelet thing, the whole sharp angular bezels, the whole royal oak aesthetic, that's in right now and Gerard Perigo is doing that. It's kind of 
the FOMO, the fear of missing out, the peer pressure. Everyone wants to be doing what's hot. And uh, I don't like that. GP, baby, you, you are able to make very nice, really impressive watches. You've been doing it since the 1800s, for God's sake. Just go back to that. So here's some good news, okay? I think there's definite hope for Gerard Perigo. I don't think that they're gonna be doing this forever, uh, the whole Royal Oak homage thing. I have a feeling they're gonna go back to doing very innovative things, fingers crossed. I'm gunning for you, GP. I'm gunning for you, GP, baby. <laughs> But I'm just very fortunate and very happy that we have these gems, these kind of snapshots from orological history, these 1960s Gerard Perigos. Uh, when you come across one in good condition, scoop it up because again, it's a blast from the past and I think that is the golden era of GP. And really quick guys, I think we should note this Gerard Perigo 1968 gyromatic date might be available during the Black Friday sale at the Time Teller shop. So do not miss out and use this coupon code for an enormous discount. But guys, as always, let me know what you think. Like, what do you think of Gerard Perigo? Did you really pay attention to them before this episode? Uh, do you have a favorite? Do you own one? God, I'd love to hear about that. Leave me a comment, I wanna hear from you. And guys, as always, if you enjoyed this episode, if you learned something, if you had a laugh, I know I'm just having a ball making this content. It sounds like you guys are too. So if you do enjoy yourself and you want to support the channel, there's a whole bunch of ways to do it. But the easiest way is just to click the subscribe button and watch the content. And I'd like to urge you to, again, uh, check out the Time Teller shop midnight, November 29th. That's the beginning of Black Friday. And that's the beginning of the Black Friday sale, the biggest sale of the year. It won't get any better than this until next Black Friday. And you don't want to wait a whole year. So just scoop the watches up when you can. When is that? Midnight, November 29th, Black Friday. Guys, just do it. And if you're looking for some watch enthusiast stocking stuffers, I have a bunch of links in the description below. Those are affiliate links. So when you click those uh, and you shop around, it helps the channel out a bunch. Thank you so much for that. But guys, please like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Real quick, if you enjoyed this episode, then do not worry, the fun doesn't need to stop here. Check out these recommended episodes that are gonna be popping up on the screen anytime now. Also, take a moment, check out my brand new channel, the Time Away channel. It's where I talk about everything outside of the watch world, some of my other collections, some of my other hobbies. And if you're not interested in any of that, don't worry, just stay right here and I will see you right here. Because I, I never leave. I am trapped inside of this camera. I'm just gonna wave goodbye on this one. I'm just so stressed. Not!